You don't know me, I watch the cube, I queue up your videos, I listen to them while I'm on the, the treadmill. You know, it helps me, you know, learn, expands my knowledge, you know, thank you. So, you know, it's really an honor to be part of that community. This is Dave Vellante, thanks for watching the cube. And for more information, just click here. Live from Santa Clara, California, it's The Cube, covering Open Networking Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We are winding down at Open Networking Summit 2017. It's quite a conference, a lot of buzz about open source as it goes into the networking space and continues to, to find traction. A lot of big companies donating projects to open source. And then of course 5G and IoT and you know, the, the innovation never stops. So Scott, really enjoyed having Scott Rainovich uh, co-host with us for these last couple of days. Scott, what'd you think? Thanks again, Jeff. It's, it's been a great show, lots of activity, some good, good news flow, actually announcements, you know, and people opening up to us about open source, as you, as you said, lots of, uh, lots of good stuff. Right, so I, I've, I should have checked the tape from 2014, because I think you actually co-hosted theCUBE at ONS in 2014, That's a long right. time ago, right. but clearly the narratives are changing quite significantly from there. So totally different world. You've, totally you've different. been following this thing forever, so before we get into some of the specifics, just kind of your general impressions of, of direction and speed in that direction sure. as we continue to evolve. Sure, sure. Well, we talked a little bit about it with uh, Martin, and uh, Martin kind of talked about it in his keynote, how when he started Nisera, which uh, for those of you who don't follow the SDN world, was the kind of one of the first big open networking startups. You know, let's have our code base be based on open source and have commodity hardware run the software so anybody can swap in any hardware and run the software. That's the concept of open networking and SDN. And uh, as Martin pointed out, when he started, it was like a speculative academic project. And right. He had no idea what it would become, and he you know, pointed out it's now, after it was acquired by VMware, it's now a billion dollar business. So um, I think, uh, and then we have other people like uh, AT&T talking about, in the keynote, John Donovan talking about how they're moving from you know, 30 percent SDN open networking last year to more than 55. More than 50%, so they're going to cross over to so that the the majority of their network will be based on uh, homegrown open networking technology, right? Um, right. Using leveraging all, a lot of this open source that is the the main topic of this show, which is run by the Linux Foundation, which has become kind of the giant mega aggregator of uh, networking open source technologies. So it's you know the the main message is it's. Um, We've gone from the academic uh, speculative phase to the actual, let's get this stuff into production, let's run networks on it, right. uh, and let's deliver your YouTube videos faster, right? Right, right. And as you look at the sponsorship behind us, right, a lot of startups, a lot of uh, innovation, you know, that comes with open source, but you, know, you still got Cisco and Juniper and the incumbents, um, and you know, we had Dave Ward on from Cisco. So as you look at kind of the incumbent positionings that, that benefited from a non-open source world and dedicated uh, integrated boxes. Absolutely. How do you see them you know, reacting and shifting in this new kind of market paradigm? Well, the, um, the first thing is they all, they all like to talk about software more than the hardware, right? Because uh, you notice the, uh, the discussion tends to focus on software these days. So they, they know that these platforms are being, the hardware platforms are being commoditized and you have these uh, third party manufacturers uh, that are coming out with you know, these so-called white boxes, which is the right. generic third party hardware that can run all the software. So Juniper and Cisco are obviously, um, they have lots of software products, but you, you see from their acquisition strategies, they're, they're focusing on buying software companies now and they want to become known as software companies. Um, and uh, I think you know they have a they have a shot. They they certainly haven't. Uh, let's let's not uh, say that Cisco hasn't stopped selling network gear. There's still right. a huge it's power a lot in of the space, <laughs> and uh, it's not like everybody is running out to buy you know commodity hardware. It's they're still looking for people to help them integrate, people to help provide service and support. Uh, you know you know the so-called. Uh, 
throat, uh, throat one, to choke. One, one throat you know? to choke, right. Yeah, right. so, uh, you know, that, that's kind of where they're moving, you know, but obviously it's, uh, these, some of these companies are big oil tankers and you don't, you know, turn them around in a, in a day. Right, and then we had um, Intel on, interesting conversation about 5G, um, basically the message being 5G is now, you, you're saying, you know, coming back from Mobile World Congress, it's not quite now. Mm -hmm. But really, the point was we're preparing for it coming, which is why right, right. the preparation is now. So again, right, your perspective right. on 5G, interesting keynote this morning, you're talking about orders of magnitude of change in the mobile network uh, data capacity over, yes. over all these yeah. various yes. iterations and how it's really moving to from you know, voice to data, but now not only from data from people, but obviously Absolutely. things, internet of things. So as you look at that kind of evolution, it's coming, right? It's coming in totally. a big, big, big way. Totally, totally. Yeah, I mean, 5G is a, uh, I mean, you can op we could talk about 5G all day long. It's so, there's so many questions and debates and, uh, about it. You know, Sandra Rivera, who we had on from Intel, had some really good points, which is, um, you know, if you're, if you're providing the fundamental technology, like Intel, the, the chips for the NFV boxes, the chips for the radio, the, you know, the, the end-to-end -end solution in the in the semiconductor space, you obviously have to invest now and right. prepare for 5G. This, the standard won't be ratified or complete till uh, at least, um, well they're saying possibly late 2018, but it's, everybody really thinks it's 2019, 2020. Um, but the big question is the applications, to your point, like um, there's kind of this uh, explosion of these new, uh, wireless WAN technologies, if you will, and in, in, in Internet of Things is driving a lot of that. You, know, you hear about the self-driving cars, right? Right. The, right. the trucks that are going to communicate right. back to HQ and tell the, tell the boss where they are all the time and how much fuel they're consuming and how fast they're going, what their average, you know, this Internet of Things market, self-driving cars, that's going to drive the need for more sophisticated mobile networks. But in the industrial space, there's a different need for very low power, low bandwidth. We, there's, a, there's a WAN technology called LoRa, LoRa right. WAN, which is right. different from 5G. So what people are trying to figure out with 5G is the applications, where, where does it fit in? What, what is actually 5G? You know, Verizon has announced a point-to-point -point 5G pilot project. It's, it's really pre-5G, you know, because 5G isn't here, but they're, they're kind of experimenting with um, as a fiber replacement, you know, Jeff needs faster broadband. Mm. He doesn't want to wait for the truck to come in and install. Dig the cable. Uh, the cable. Maybe we'll have 5G as a, a as a new last mile solution, point to point, or point to point for businesses. You know, the the big oil derrick in the you know that needs a, a big pipe. You know, there's there's many different applications right, that are being right. discussed. You know, and, and is the timing of the standard, is, is it just kind of going through its natural stages or are there a couple of you know, kind of key uh, items that, that are still being hashed out that they can't come to agreement? Oh, or is it just kind of working many, its many way? many, many items. I mean, I'm not, I'm not technically sophisticated enough to dive into all the different, right, right. The, they'll argue about you know, the, the protocols for you know, authentication, then, okay. you know, the, the, what exactly, how much bandwidth do we need? Are there different flavors of it? You know, a lower bandwidth flavor versus a gigabit flavor. You know, what are the chipsets going to look like? Uh, it, you know, it's a very complex uh, standard. And, uh, but you know, more importantly, on the business side, the carriers are asking, um, how much money are we going to have to spend to deliver 5G? And we just we just spent all this money on LTE and all the licenses, and <laughs> and you know we're and does LTE go away when 5G comes, or uh, they run those in parallel? It'll, it'll definitely it'll coexist. Still be there, right? well, that's what I'm saying. That's the question. Like you, you Jeff Frick, do you really need uh, five? Uh, do you need 5G now? And what right, are you going to pay right, for it? Yeah, right. I mean, it's a pay. You need to pay so your kids can watch YouTube faster? I mean, no, but I definitely want my <laughs> autonomous vehicle to hit the brakes on time before I exactly, hit the, the exactly. pedestrian, so there's definitely application. I didn't realize you had an autonomous I'm vehicle. Not yet, but right? you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping if more yeah. people watch the cube, I'll get one faster. Yeah, so next year when you acquire your autonomous Tesla. Right, yeah. right, my autonomous, which they just sent the software download, which is amazing, that's yeah. a whole different story. Shifting gears, Edge, a lot of conversation about Edge. We do a right. lot of stuff with GE and, and, and IoT, and as you like to say, 
I IoT, the industrial internet of things, and kind of mm -hmm. this whole concept of you can't get everything back to the cloud because that's right because the speed that's of right. light is just too damn slow. That's right. Um, that's right. And we talked to to uh, Ehab Tazar or Tarazi from Equinix that's and. Right. We talk about the edge at the devices, as you said, low power, nasty conditions. Yes, we're live, they're banging plates over there. <laughs> um, but then he really talked about the edge of all the clouds and, and really the edge in the data center side right, because right. most of the stuff is traveling peer to peer, direct connect, and, and having that edge between your organization and then back into all these various That's clouds. Right. That's right. Pretty That's interesting right. uh, take is that kind of back, back end sophistication and interconnectivity just gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Totally, totally, and uh, Google, Google also talked about that, building a new B2, they call it B2, a peering network. I mean, uh, if people don't realize uh, how, how sophisticated these networks have to be, right, you think that you, you, know, you download a video and it's just, it's just out there, right, right? right? It's actually going through you know, a, a private network, possibly, you know, a Netflix has their own network, then it's peering with your local ISP, it's peering somewhere with your, your last mile provider, or if you're on a mobile network, it, it might be getting to you a different way. And so the, the, the discussion of where the edge goes is very important because um, as you pointed out with IoT, computing processing, it, you know, it takes a long time as we see with Siri all the time. Have you ever had that problem where Siri's not there. Google's or? always there. Yeah. Okay, Google. No, it works seamlessly, perfectly okay, all the time. Okay, you're an Android guy, so yeah. Not quite. So <laughs> when you when you ask that question to Siri or Google, it, it's going back all the way to the cloud and making that computation right. back somewhere in the cloud. So the question is where should that computation uh, happen when when Jeff Frick needs to hit his brakes to, to avoid knocking over the <laughs> unless it's a criminal you, that's a different piece of software you, you actually want to hit the criminal computation getting hung up in the <laughs> right. cloud right so that's that's the, what the debate about the edge is it's it's fascinating that's why I love being in this business it just continues to evolve and change over time so last thing really we are we are at the Open Networking Summit it's a Linux Foundation show Linux took this over a little while ago and as you said earlier this huge uh, move to move a lot of these open source projects to the Linux Foundation for them to really provide a home, if you will, and a, and a set of resources and a set of everything from the 503C and everything else you need. Mm -hmm. um, AT&T talked about delivering their project open source today. Uh, we heard earlier um, from Dell EMC making a contribution. Mm -hmm. So as you look at the evolution of, of open source and Linux Foundation as a subset and how it impacts this networking and software-defined networking catching up to software-defined compute and software-defined storage. How, how significant is that as a driver of this adoption? Well, it's, I mean, it's a big move. Uh, most, of the, most of the folks here at ONS are you know, really more in, in the telecom world. If you think of networking, what's happened in networking over the last decade, it's moved from enterprise more to cloud and telecom, right? You don't, if you're an enterprise, you don't have to worry about building your network as much anymore because most of your applications are heading to the cloud, right? right? As right. a service provider. So they are uh, emulating, you know, what, what the cloud leaders did, which, you know, the cloud leaders such as um, Google, uh, you know, were very aggressive with open source and um, the telecom players saw how fast they moved. Right, right. right. By sharing code and, and having a uh, more of a grassroots approach to building the, the code base. So that's, um, the reason why it's a big move is that's a huge shift for telecom, right? Because telecom right, right. has for decades built their proprietary networks. So right. you want LTE, okay, we're going to do it our way. We're going to work with a, a vendor and, and take years to build this very specific proprietary network. And they, they've they looked at cloud and they, they want the speed, right? right they want right. to be able to move faster. So AT&T talked about how when they deployed this new um, white box network in production, they, they did it in three months, right? Uh, which is incredible. Right? From, from the, the chip coming out of the foundry to developing the, the box and the software and the service, it took them three to four months, which is a just an incredible change from the way these networks used to be, but it used to take years. Right, well the other really interesting play, I think you, you teased it out with, with the, the announcement with, with AT&T and this little company, Snaproot. Some little startup, and, and, and we also heard it from Drew at, at Dell EMC that because of the open source 
connection via the Linux Foundation, it exposes them and creates an ecosystem that they can now leverage all the smarts and ingenuity and innovation coming out of a sea of startups that they may or may not have ever had a direct relationship with and to leverage that internally. That's right. It's a pretty cool, uh, right. pretty cool factor exactly. there. Exactly, it can, it can all happen a lot faster because if it's all based on open standards, you just can plug it in. And it does, you don't just plug it in, it doesn't work the first day. But right. Three months is a big change from you know, two Donkey years. years. All right, so last, last word, you're uh, launching a new thing. Um, oh, the great. new The new uh, Scott Rainovich, so right. give us what's the new name, where can people get information, okay. and when do you actually launch? I know it's a little preview, but, okay. uh, but that's okay. It's, it's called Futurium, and if that's R-I-O-M, you know, because the names are running out on the internet. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. Um, and uh, it launches in two weeks, and it's my hybrid um, blog research platform. So I'll have contributed uh, information. We'll have big reports on industrial IoT. It's a premium service, but we'll also have free reports. So you can download free stuff. You can download premium reports. You want to understand about all of these emerging technologies and IoT, SD-WAN, cloud infrastructure. Where it's going, you know, fut Futurium is really. If you can't figure out the spelling, that. just tweet to Scott yeah, yeah, and ask exactly. him. He'll, yeah, he'll send Reno, you. A, he'll you send know? you a link. Yeah, it's yeah. at the lower third. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. well, very exciting, thanks and a lot. Uh, and uh, we, we look forward to watching it grow. And Excellent. thanks for uh, sitting in with me uh, here at ONS. Thanks. I always I always love doing the cube. So I hope uh, hope to be back here soon. Absolutely. All right. So he's Scott Rainovich. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the cube. We're at ONS 2017 in Santa Clara. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. It's a busy schedule. Check SiliconANGLE. TV to see all the shows we're covering over the next several weeks. We'll be pretty much everywhere. So we're out for now. Thanks, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.